the gag, the gag of it all is when the blogs announced that Kim Zolciak was getting divorced, literally no one was surprised. No, literally no one was surprised. I'm pretty sure we all just collectively said, okay. What we were surprised about was the amount of tea that was being spilled, the amount of Georgia mud that was being slung amongst the couple. You're a dumb Hi guys, my name is Cam. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about what we know so far with the divorce between Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman. On May 8th, according to documents obtained by TMZ, it was reported that the couple owed $1.1 million to the IRS for unpaid taxes, interest, and penalties from 2013, 2017, and 2018. Now, this didn't include the $15,000 that the couple also owed the state of Georgia for taxes for 2018. That very very same day, news broke that allegedly Kim had filed for divorce from Croy. The stories about the unpaid taxes and divorce came literally back to back and something tells me that this was a strategic move for the family. The separation was dated as April 30th and the divorce filings were listed as irretrievably broken with no hope of reconciliation. What's interesting about this and the reason why I mention it is because Kim and Croy try to beat each other to the punch and while it was originally reported that Kim had filed for divorce from Croy, it was actually the other way around. Croy had ended up beating Kim to the punch and and he filed for divorce first. Kim requested legal custody of their four kids, spousal support, and to legally restore her maiden name. Croy requested full legal custody as well. Prior to this, there were actually some cracks in the family foundation. You know, they've always been selling us the 17 four-wheelers, 17 kids, Southern love story for about 11 years now. In February, it was reported that their mansion in an Alpharetta country club had entered foreclosure proceedings. Truist Bank stated the proceedings actually started back in August of 2022 after the couple defaulted on their mortgage. Now the tea behind this allegedly is the couple used their mortgage as collateral for a construction loan and because they defaulted on the construction loan they defaulted on the mortgage. The estate located in Manor Golf and Country Club was slated to be auctioned off on March 7th in Fulton County. The home was originally purchased in 2012 for $880,000 and it features five bedrooms, six and a half baths, a pool, waterfall, spa and elevator i hate elevators the home at the time of the proceedings was actually valued at about 2.5, 2.6 million dollars. And this is a large amount of money. And I don't really know why they didn't just sell the home around that time, especially when you consider what came next. So I want to stop here and I want to briefly talk about the family's reaction to the foreclosure news and to the news reports about their home. This is completely different than the reaction the family has had to the divorce. As the home was under foreclosure, the family took the PR position of deny, deny, deny. That's absolutely not true. We don't know where all this information is coming from. So your stuff is still in the house? Yes, everything is still there. We all live there. And there's no plan on leaving? Nope. But the auction, and they're saying March 7th, right? We'll see you March 7th. We'll see what happens March 7th. Even so, Kim took it upon herself to take a tour of the home and talk about how she is never leaving the house because the foreclosure news just does not make sense to them and they have no idea what everybody is talking about. My house was not sold for $257,000. If you guys think I would let my home that we put millions and millions of dollars into go for $257,000, you're an idiot, okay? I'm here until I fucking want to move out, until I decide I don't want to live here anymore. So enjoy the view, haters, because you're going to be seeing it for quite some time. In the end, this definitely did work for them, this strategy, and they were able to clear up the foreclosure issue and they were able to, I'm sure, make some sort of payment arrangement with the company that was doing the construction. So since the divorce, the couple has been getting really messy in the media, slowly spilling tea on their former partners to make the argument that their relationship was damaged due to the other person's faults. So let's take a look at each person's position and let me know in the comments below what you guys think about all of this. Kim's position is Croy is basically a drug abuser. She's witnessed him smoke pot on many occasions and she doesn't believe that if he has full custody of their kids that the kids will be safe. 
She's requesting that Croy submit to a five-panel hair follicle drug screening and requesting that he not cut his hair until he does so. On the other hand, Croy has more of an argument and Croy is basically saying that Kim has a gambling addiction and a spending addiction. He's saying that until she fixes these problems, he wants sole custody of the kids and he's requesting that she take a mental health evaluation for her gambling addiction. I just love gambling. He said that this is troubling behavior that only escalated more and more months prior to their divorce. Because of the gambling, which allegedly she has admitted to him in the past, it has ruined their marriage and the family that they built together. Those are the two arguments and both of the sides. So speaking of gambling and spending money, Radar Online has gotten a copy of Croy's bank statements and they really do shed a lot of light on the amount of money that Kim was spending. Let's just take a minute and talk about this. That's why you got no furniture, your car, no furniture, got the car, no teeth, no teeth. No. She got her teeth done for but free. Wait, but she ate, ate them or something because they're missing. In the statements from 2022, there was a total amount of $127,000 worth of deposits during the month and almost exactly the same amount came out of the account. In the statements, Kim made many payments to Coinbase, which is a company that's used to buy, sell, and transfer cryptocurrency. I assume she was using the cryptocurrency to gamble with. I just want to mention some other payments that were of note in the bank statements that do help to shed some light on who Kim is as a person. There was payments made to her longtime chef for about $2,500, payments made for plastic surgery, payments made for a lot of water. I don't even think it was a lot of water. I think it was a very expensive water and then also a lot of wine. And it really did help that he got this information out, especially because he's trying to make the argument that Kim is who he says she is. Despite all of this, the gambling addiction, drug addiction, whatever, 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 the gag, the gag of it all is they're living under the same roof. They're saying all of this about each other. They're releasing, I'm sure, leaking some information to get their narrative out there. They're rooms apart. According to a source from People Magazine, the couple believes that it's best if they stay together or live under one roof during this time. Now, I don't have any kids. I've never been married. I don't really know the perspective of a married childbearing adult. But I will say this, if I ever get a divorce and I have kids, I'm getting the fuck out of there. I want the kids probably more, more than likely. I don't know, but I'm getting the fuck out. I don't know how they're able to do all of this back and forth go through these divorce proceedings, slander each other on social media, tuck their kids in bed at night, but then also be like, okay, what's the tea for dinner? Like, what are we doing? Like, you know, are we going to McDonald's? Like, what's up? Maybe that is a part of being a parent. I don't have a childbearing bone in my body. I don't really know. I don't, I don't know. But to me, I would want to get the fuck out of there. Before I talk about the shade that the couple has been posting online, I just want to mention it does look like they're trying to recoup as much money as possible, at least while the story is hot. On May 26th, TMZ noted that Kim has begun to sell her wigs on the Beerman closet. And these wigs, seven in total, range from 1500 to 2750. I'm weirded out that you wear a wig. This is a really smart move for Kim because her wigs have always been a topic of conversation on RHOA. I did not try to pull it off. I did not want to pull it off. I just wanted to shift it a little bit. They also have started to sell some Acroy stuff. And when you see how they're posting the wigs and some of Kim's items for sale and they throw Croy's t-shirts just on the floor and they take a little picture of it, it is so hilarious to me, the juxtaposition of it all. It goes to show you how they feel about it. And I'm just gonna say this, Kim. I'm gay, woo! I know how gay men think. Now is the time for Croy to start selling some of the things that I feel like will appeal to gay men. Underwear, socks, t-shirts, pants, anything and everything that he can to give gay men that fantasy, he can use it for his advantage. I need Jesus. I mean, especially when you consider the fact that the family probably has marketed everything under the sun for money that they no longer have and that they probably have already spent. I don't think this proposition is for fetched. So despite them trying to make amends to their bank account balance, it doesn't seem like they're making amends anytime soon when you consider that they've been shading each other online. On May 25th, Kim posted a cryptic Instagram story where she said, quote, manipulation is when they blame you for your reaction to their toxic behavior, but never discuss their disrespect that triggered you. And under the post, she said, quote, read that again. On May 27th, Kim also posted a video where she's seen singing a Luke Combs song called Love You 
you anyway, with her kids singing along as well in the back seat. Now, I just want to stop this here and note this. I don't have kids. I've never been married, as I said before. But one thing that I know I would not do because I don't have the tact, I don't have the gall, I don't have the audacity. I would never use my kid to shade somebody else, especially somebody that I'm going through a divorce with. I've seen a lot of Dateline episodes. There's been a lot of things that I've been exposed to and heard about just as an adult. And so it's something that I just don't want to do and I don't think I would ever do. It does kind of speak to me that Kim is using her kids to sort of shade Croy in this situation. And it does make sense why Croy has responded with the caricature of Kim and the cameras rolling because that's the only reason why I can imagine that Kim is shading her former husband in this way. Croy responded to this by posting a caricature of Kim and he said, don't be so obvious. And I assume this is because there have been rumors and reports online that Kim is trying to return to reality TV. I do know that Kim will be on this season of RHOA, which I'll post a short on my channel whenever I see it, but I imagine that this was pre-filmed pre-divorce. The most recent headline in the divorce drama is where we find out that things actually turned physical between the former couple. On June 2nd, the New York Post and TMZ reported that back on May 4th, police were called to the couple's residence because of a domestic dispute. The story goes, according to the New York Post, allegedly according to Croy, who got all of this on film, Kim had gotten physical with him because he locked her things in a safe and wouldn't give her access. Because of this, he said she had punched him in the head and he called the police. When they did arrive, he refused medical treatment and didn't have signs of physical injuries. The reason why he said he had locked her things up in the safe was because she had suffered a major gambling loss recently and the items totaling around $175,000 according to Kim would help him to offset those losses since according to him it's marital property. The cops checked the safe and didn't find that many valuables, only Kim's passport and an LV case, but quote, no fancy purses. Now, if you'll remember this date, May the 4th, it's important because just one day later, Croy would file for divorce, so it seems like this was the breaking point for him and the tip of the iceberg. Now that I've talked about the divorce and all the drama, the foreclosure, the taxes, let me get into my opinion briefly before I end the video. I just want to say this, let's keep in mind, despite all the tea and the mudslinging and the four-wheelers and the dogs and this and that. There are kids that are involved in the situation and divorces do damage kids, especially the more younger they are. Let's just keep this in mind while we're entertained by the situation. It must be really weird for their children, no matter what age, to hear from mommy and daddy that nothing is changing. You know, the divorce is just a piece of paper being ripped up, but then also hearing from their friends or their moms and dads that their dad is calling their mom a manipulator or that their dad is saying that their mom has gambling problems. It must be really, really difficult and really weird for the kids involved. So I do feel for them. And this is just a situation that I just would never want to be in. My other opinion is Kim is is really, really calculated with all of this. You can see this in certain ways, like her posting shady videos or her posting pictures of his t-shirts that she's selling just on the floor. When you think about it, Kim has this history of drinking. She has this history of being a narcissist and an unlikable person. If you felt like you were a slave, would you tell me? <laughs> yeah. But above all of that, she has this history of spending an exorbitant amount of money, so much so to where it makes people uncomfortable. Take, for example, this clip where Kim is discussing spending way more money on her kid's birthday party than Croy is comfortable with. All you need to entertain children is pizza, cake, and some games. That's it. You should be so proud of me. So the total bill is 22. Look at that. <laughs> $22,000 is still very expensive. It was 32. Oh, I didn't see that one. So I'm sure there's more examples of this on Don't Be Tardy, but to be honest, that show is just not for me. I'm not the target demographic, which I'm sure is like 55 year old Southern women who have nothing else to do but watch Bravo TV all day. And when I was doing research for this, I was like, I don't even want to touch that show. Nonetheless, with this family, it's just giving classic keeping up with the Joneses. They have built this beautiful life with their 17 four wheelers and 17 kids where they have all of these things, but they haven't thought along the way how they're going to maintain all of the things that they have. And we find this more and more with celebrities where you're living in the moment, you love your life, but you're not really thinking more long term and how you're going to save money for the long run. And when you think about it, Croy doesn't have a contract anymore. They don't have a show on Bravo anymore. They were just simply not making enough money 
to maintain the lifestyle that they had. Make sure you're paying your taxes, guys. Make sure you're saving your money as best as you can for the long run. We don't have as much as these people have that we're talking about, but at the end of the day, we can use them as an example in our everyday lives. Close your legs to married men. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And something tells me that I'll be talking to you guys with braces now very, very soon. Bye, guys.